You've seen the Blade 150. You've seen the ET 200. Today, we feast our eyes on the ET 180. Let's get this thing taken out of the package and put together. Here are all the pieces for the ET-180 laid out, the, the two plates, the power distribution board, the arms, and all the accessories. Now, the accessories that I got in here, these are all kind of your standard accessories. You got the nylon spacers, the nylon nuts, the nylon screws, the uh, washers to go between your power distribution board and your carbon fiber so it doesn't short out, but also got the three millimeter spacers and the two millimeter screws. So if you buy this, you might want to throw in an extra set of three millimeter screws just in case your spacers are three millimeter and they include two millimeter screws, which has happened for both my ET-180 and my ET-200. This is the ET-200 and you can see the top plate here from the ET-180 is actually exactly the same as the top plate, except this one actually has all four screws drilled, screw holes drilled through it, including this one, which this one here does not have. <laughs> Gotta drill that out later. Also, it has the same power distribution board and the same lower plate. The only difference between these two is really just the length of these arms. And you can see here's a 180 arm versus a uh, 200 arm. Let's go ahead and get some measurements off of these plates real quick and we'll see what they come across as. 1.00.99 millimeters. This one comes across at 0.99 millimeters. The power distribution board is ultra thin at half a millimeter and the arms are two millimeters and two millimeters has kind of become the standard uh, width for these uh, arms. If we can get up here close and look at this, there we go. The uh, cuts on here look good. They don't look like they were done with dull blades. They're not cutting my fingers, which is good. So you shouldn't have to sand these down at all. It does also have the little spit holes out here where you can, uh, this one here, where you can put in landing gear if you want, if you're putting your battery on the bottom so that you don't actually land on your battery. Now I'm never really sure when you're putting these together if there's actually an exact right way to do it. But one thing I know for sure is anytime you put a screw through this power distribution board, you need to have a spacer like this on the underside of it to keep it from shorting out with the carbon fiber on the bottom. And the only reason for that is because you don't want to create a contact point between a positive and negative through the lower carbon fiber plate. So out here I use some longer uh, three millimeter screws to mount on the um, the spacers here and what I did with this front one is just a normal screw going through with a nylon nut on the top holding it down. Now this one actually took the nylon spacer and I pointed it down through it and so the nut is down here on the bottom. What that allows for is the NASA 32 board or a CC3D board or KK2 to sit up here on top and then have the nylon screws go down through the board into here and that's a lot easier to put screws down through the board than it is to put nuts on the top with the spacers pointing up. And like I said all, the spa all of these screws have have to have spacers between the power distribution board and the carbon fiber even if you're doing like this with the nylon spacers up here you have to have a spacer inside there to keep it from shorting out so here's the 180 fully assembled and it actually looks pretty neat the uh, arms to me look kind of short because I'm kind of used to seeing the uh, longer arms on the ET 200 but here we'll go ahead and compare these two together I'll line up these two like this and we can see the ET 200 arms are just a little bit longer which is you know why it's an ET 200 and not a uh, ET-180. Uh, and we'll go ahead and get a measurement on the weight on this. This is the ET-180 coming across at 44.4 grams. Just for comparative sake, we'll put the ET-200 on here, which weighs in at 50.1 grams. And the big difference between the two is that, well, obviously the longer arms, but also the ET-200 can spin five inch propellers, where I think this can only, check, can only spin uh, four inch propellers. And speaking of propellers, here are some four inch propellers. And if I center this up over the hole here, you can see that that is clearing the arm just, or the post there just fine. Now, if you have a five inch propeller, you're not gonna have any luck because it is hitting the post. So the ET-180 can only run 180 per, or uh, four inch propellers. If you ran it upside down, you'd probably run five inch maybe, but I think they might be too close together even in the middle, yeah. 
it's crossing over the middle. So you can't even run five inch propellers on this upside down without some kind of modification. But it runs four inch propellers just fine. This is the ET-180 and if you're looking at finding a quadcopter that can run four inch propellers, this one is actually pretty neat. I kind of like the look of this one better than I do my Q200. Not that the Q200 is really that bad, it's just like kind of like this look out, look a little bit better. Anyway, if you have any questions about this or any of my other quadcopters, leave them in the comments and I'll try to help you out as best I can. And as always, thanks for watching.